Okay. It is exactly two o'clock UTC in our world in the cloud. So it is my great honor then to introduce our first speaker for FIPSAC this year. That is Vincent Pilod. He's going to talk about on type cones of G vector fans. Take it away, Vincent. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you hear me well. Um, so first, I would like to thank the organizer for setting up this uh, virtual meeting in such a short time. Uh, in about the same time, I just managed to prepare my slides. Um, I'm very glad to present this paper on type cones of G-vector fans, uh, which is a joint work with Arnaud Padrol, Yann Palu, and Pierre-Guy Plamondon. Uh, so as you see on the left, we try to reproduce a nice uh, FIPSAC uh, online logo, uh, but we miss additional collaborators. Uh, so if you like the topic, don't hesitate to discuss with us, even if your uh, last name does not start with a P. Um, so I put on the chat a link to the slides in the paper if you want to follow uh, at the same time. And also my co-authors are sitting to this presentation so they can answer your, uh, your question if you have any. So let me start with the motivation of the talk, which is, uh, is, uh, oops, which is uh, kinematic associahedron. Um, so first I should start with uh, an associahedron. So an associahedron is a polytope whose graph is a flip graph on triangulations of a polygon. So you can um, think of it with any Catalan family you, you like. So here we will use for vertices triangulations or binary trees, for edges flips between triangulations or rotations among binary trees, uh, for faces dissections or shoulder trees, and for facets internal diagonals of the polygon or coronas. So classically, there are three uh, big families of construction of the, of the associahedron. Uh, so on the left, you see the secondary polytope, uh, which is based on the secondary fan. In the middle, it's maybe the most classical one, is uh, uh, the loaded associahedron, which is uh, based on the G-vector fan. And on the right, you see the um, construction of Chapoton, Fomin, and Zelevinsky, which is based on the D-vector fan. So these three families of construction have been compared in this paper by Ceballos, Santos, and Ziegler, and they proved that they are essentially non-equivalent. But recently, uh, a new construction appeared, uh, an unidentified construction of the associahedron, which is a kinematic associahedron. So it's, it appeared in work by Arkani Hamed, Bey, Hay, and Yang, and it was soon generalized to cluster algebra by Basie, Matt, Duville, Musavan, Thomas, and Ilya. So the goal of the talk is to try to revisit this construction and, and explain it in a, a different way. So let me first present this construction. So the kinematic associahedron is an n-dimensional associahedron, which is constructed in the kinematic space, and this space is a quadratic dimensional space. And it's constructed as a section of the positive orton with an n-dimensional affine subspace. Let me show you what it looks like in dimension three. So to construct a three-dimensional associahedron, the first thing that you do is that you fix six positive real numbers, which are parameters, and you look at the space indexed by internal diagonals of the n plus three gone. And so it has, uh, so the, sorry, n is uh, three here, so it's, it's, it's the hexagon. Uh, so you have nine internal diagonals, so you're in R to the nine, and you look at the positive orton. So you fix Z positive, and then you consider the six Equalities which are on the right, which define an, uh, a three dimensional affine subspace, and you take the intersection of this positive orton with this affine subspace. So let me write that for any n. So I denote by xn the set of all uh, diagonals of, of an n plus 3 gone, labeled from vertices labeled from 0 to n plus 2, and by yn those diagonal whose uh, endpoints are neither 0 nor n plus 2. And I consider the polytope defined here. So it's defined in a space which has dimension uh, number of diagonals. And it's defined as the intersection of the positive orton with uh, equalities, so an affine subspace defined by equalities given by um, uh, uh, equations uh, labeled by the yn's. And these equations are illustrated here. So these are the, the equations. And these equations are parameterized by numbers which are just real numbers. So when you look at this polytope, it's always an associahedron. This is the result of Akan, Yamed, Bell, Hay, and Yang. So our goal is to uh, 
re-explain or, or reinterpret this uh, this result using type cones. So let me explain you first what is a type cone. So I start from any complete simplicial fine in R n with capital N rates, and I will denote by G the so capital N times little n matrix whose row whose rows are representatives of the rays of f. And now we pick a height vector h and consider the polytope defined by gx smaller than h. So that means that on each ray of the, of the fan, I choose a hyperplane at the height given by my height vector. And I consider the intersection of, this, of the half spaces defined by these hyperplanes. And I obtain a polytope which I denote ph. Uh, you see that uh, I might have done my choices properly, as in, in case A here, in the sense that uh, the polytopes that I obtain has the same combinatorics as the fan I started from. But I might also have chosen my, my height vector improperly. So for example, in these cases B and C, the number of facets, the number of edges here, is not even the number of rays I started from. So my question is, uh, when is F the fan I started from, when is it the normal fan of the polytope pH that I obtain? Let me just remind uh, that if you have a face F in a polytope P, then you can define a cone associated to this face. So this cone is a positive fan of the normal vectors of the facets containing F. So for instance, for this red edge, uh, so this red edge uh, is contained in two facets, the red facet and the orange facet. So its normal cone is just a cone generated by the red normal vector and the orange normal vector. So it's this red normal cone. And the normal fan of P, of the polytope P, is the collection of all normal cones of F. So let's go back to my question. I want to know when is F, the fan I started from, when is it the normal fan of the polytope I obtained the given H? And the answer to this question is given by the world crossing inequalities. Uh, to explain with these inequalities, let me go to dimension three so that we see something interesting. So I have a fan in dimension three, I just draw part of it. So I just consider a certain wall in this fan, so this red wall, which is generated by a set of rays which I denote by red capital R. And this wall uh, is contained in two regions whose remaining vectors I denote by blue little r and green little r prime. And now I play the same game as I played before. Uh, so I place a hyperplane on each uh, ray of, the, of this part of the picture. And again, I did three choices and we see that what I obtain uh, might be good in the sense that what I obtain is just a dual of what I started from. Or it might be really bad uh, as on the right. Uh, so somehow I choose the blue and green hyperplanes too close uh, to the center in comparison to the red ones, or it might be somehow the limit case here uh, where I don't really see what I want, but it's not really bad. Uh, so I hope that with the limit case, you see that uh, uh, this limit case is related to the uh, linear dependence among the vectors that you see on the left. And this is what the world crossing inequalities are. So for a world R, I define a world cross inequality. So it's an inequality which involves the heights, so the, the h, and the coefficients in front of these heights are just given by the coefficient of the unique linear dependence among the rays that you see here. So I have a simplicial fan, which means that I have dimension many plus one rays here. Therefore, I have a unique linear dependence up to multiplication. And if I choose the multiplicative factor so that the coefficient in front of uh, blue little r and green little r prime are positive, let's say the sum is two, then I have a unique linear dependence. And this linear dependence, I transform it into an inequality on the h, which is a world crossing inequality. So for us, we just need to remember here that world crossing inequalities come from linear dependencies among the rays. And this is a characterization of which uh, height vectors are good. So the fan F I started from is the normal fan of the polytope pH I obtained for a certain H. If and on H, H satisfies all world crossing inequalities for all walls of F. Uh, so let's look at our example again. Uh, so here I have this fan with, uh, in dimension two with five rays. And uh, 
you see that uh, so this fan has uh, five walls. We're in dimension two, so walls and rays are the same here. So it means that I will have five inequalities, which are given here. Let me just pass two of them. So let's look at the world crossing inequality for the world two. So it will involve the rays one, two, and three. And the linear dependence between these rays is one plus three equals two. Therefore, the world crossing inequality for two is H1 plus H3 bigger than H2. And now let me pass the one for the world five. It will involve the rays one, four, and five. And here the linear dependence is just one plus four equals zero. And therefore the inequality is given by H1 plus H4 positive. So I, ha I have drawn these inequalities here on the right. I should draw them in dimension five because we have five rays. But I picked a well-chosen two-dimensional affine subspace and I intersect these inequalities with this subspace. We'll see that in a moment. And this is what I see. And I want, just want you to observe two things on this picture. The first thing is that some inequalities are more important than others. So these are the red ones. And the reason is that the black ones are implied by the red ones. For example, if you look at uh, the inequality for five, it's obtained just as the sum of the inequality for two and the inequality for three. And the second thing that I want us to look at is where are these three examples, these three polytopes in the picture? So the case A uh, is well chosen. So it satisfies all world crossing inequalities. Therefore, it, the corresponding point is somewhere here in the accepted region. Uh, the choice B is, uh, is not good, but almost only uh, the world crossing inequality for two is, uh, is not fulfilled, but, but almost. I mean, it's just uh, fulfilled with an equality. Therefore, it's on this uh, hyperplane corresponding to two. And the choice C is the same, except uh, it really violates the world crossing inequality for four. So it's, it's there on the other side of this line four. Okay, so now that we understood which are the good H vectors uh, to realize the fan F, let's just give them a name. And this name is a type cone, which was uh, studied by Mike Mullen in the 70s. So the type cone of a fan F is a realization space of F. Uh, so it's a set of height vectors H, so that F is a normal fan of PH, or we just saw that it's a set of height vectors H, which satisfy all work crossing inequalities for F. So again, for this two-dimensional fan with two-dimensional fan with five rays, what I see is this, is this uh, fan when I intersect it properly. So let me explain this intersection now. I want you to observe that the type cone is an open cone. So first it's a cone because dilations preserve normal fans. And it's open because we just saw that world crossing inequalities are strict. I want you to observe that it has a huge linearity space. Uh, the reason is that translations preserve normal fans. So if you add to a valid H, something which is in the image of uh, the matrix G, then you, you, you remain in the type cone. And now if you quotient the type cone by its linearity space, what you get is something which has dimension capital N, number of rays, minus little n, which is the dimension. So for example, for this, this example, or running example, I have uh, capital N is five, it has five rays, and uh, little n is two, it has dimension two. Therefore, I have a cone in dimension three, which indeed, if I intersect it with a proper affine uh, hyperplane, gives me a polytope in dimension two, which is this polytope, which I call the type polytope of this time. So if you like polytopes, uh, you should like that. This is a polytope of polytopes. Each point in this polytope, in this type polytope, is a polytope whose normal fan uh, is that blue fan. OK, I want to observe two more things. So the first thing is that the closure of the type cone is a set of polytopes whose normal fan cosines the fan F. It's also known as the deformation cone of the, of the fan. And another thing is that uh, Minkowski sums of polytopes behave very nicely in this, this type cone uh, in the sense that they correspond to positive linear combinations of height vectors. Uh, so now let me give you an example which should be familiar to this audience. Uh, the fan I consider here is the bread fan with one region for each permutation. The permutation gives you the order of the coordinates in this region. And this fan is realized by the permutahedron, given as the, convex, as the convex cell of the permutation in one end. So the 
closed type cone of the bright fan is a set of deformed pentahedra, which can also be uh, manipulated by some modular functions. Let me just remind that. A deformed pentahedron is a polytope whose normal fan coarsens the bread fan. And it can be uh, represented as, as such a polytope. Um, so it has one inequality for each ray of the bread arrangement. And uh, so each ray corresponds to a subset of one n. And the right hand side in these inequalities have to satisfy these submodular inequalities. Uh, and the submodular inequalities are just all implied by the world cross inequalities. So the world cross inequalities correspond to those uh, where R and S only differ by two elements. So this deformation permit, uh, sorry, this is deformed permitahedra was studied in details by Postnikov. So now let me go back to the general case. Uh, so I still have a complete simplicial fan F with capital N rays. I still denote by capital G as a capital N by N matrix whose rows are the re representative of rays of F. And now let me consider a matrix K, which is a left kernel of G. So this means that it has uh, the right dimension, so capital N minus N times capital N, and I want, it to, I want K G to be zero. Then there is a classical uh, transformation, affine transformation on polytope, which uh, transforms the polytope PH we defined before into an affinely equivalent polytope QH, which is defined in R to the capital N as the intersection of uh, the positive orton with a well-chosen affine subspace defined by this matrix K. And the idea here is very simple, is that instead of requiring that Gx is smaller than H, then let's just look at the differences between H and Gx and ask this to be positive. Okay, so this is very classical in, in uh, polytope theory. So now let's, uh, and it's, a, it's a, an equivalent, so uh, any pH is represented by QH and vice, and vice and versa. Uh, and now uh, let me just reformulate what we have seen so far. So if you have a fan F, then any, like all polytopal realizations of this fan can be a finely, uh, a finely equivalent to uh, polytope QH of this form as soon as H is in the type cone of your fan. Okay, so until now we have done nothing. So now let's just do a very simple observation. Let's just do a weird assumption. Let's assume that the type cone is simplicial. Okay, why not? In this case, I claim that for the matrix K that we have here, so for the left kernel of G, I can choose the matrix whose rows are in the normal vectors of the facets of the type cone. Uh, let's check why. So the type cone has dimension capital N minus little n. So that's good for the dimension of the matrix. And remember that we said that the uh, world crossing inequalities all came from linear dependencies among the, G among the rays of the, of the fan. This means that all normal vectors of the type cone will satisfy this, uh, this equality to be in the left kernel G. So it's perfectly valid to take as K uh, this matrix whose uh, rows are the inner normal vectors of the facets of, of the type cone. And now uh, let me just reformulate what we had before. Now what we obtain is that all polytopal realizations of the fan F are affinely equivalent to a polytope which I denote RL, which is just QH, it's exactly the same, except I replaced KH by L. And L is just something positive. The reason is that as soon as KH is completely positive. It means that uh, H satisfies all inequalities given by the normal vectors of the facets of the type cone, which means that it belongs to the type cone. So this is just a reformulation in the case where the type cone is simplicial. Okay, so now, now that we, we are done with the type cone, I want to uh, go back to special fans, so the G vector fans. Let me start with one which is maybe easier, which is the, the Sylvester fan. So the Sylvester fan is a normal fan of low desassociahedron. I don't really need to define it in details here. Uh, you can think of it as a fan with one cone for each binary tree. And this cone is given by inequalities corresponding to the edges of the binary tree. So here I prefer to uh, label my regions of the Sylvester fan by triangulations. And therefore uh, the rays of the fan are labeled by internal diagonals. 
and uh, exchangeable rays are, uh, are labeled by pairs of crossing diagonals. So now that we have the possible exchangeable pairs, let me uh, tell you what are the world crossing inequalities. So you have one world crossing inequality for each pair of crossing diagonals. So if you have blue AC crossing green BD, then the corresponding world crossing inequality is given by blue plus green minus red positive. And among these inequalities, uh, you can look at which ones define facets of the type cone. And there are exactly those world crossing inequalities for which blue and green are consecutive diagonals. Uh, so when you have that, you can just count and observe that the type cone is simplicial. So the uh, number of, of uh, facet defining inequalities, so this number, is given by capital N, the number of internal diagonals, minus little n, which is uh, uh, the dimension. And therefore, we obtain the result by Arkani, Ahmed, Bey, He, and Yan, uh, just applying the observation about simplicial type cones that we had before. So again, we obtain uh, all realizations of the Sylvester fan as an intersection as, uh, in, in a space uh, uh, labeled by the uh, rays of the fan as intersection of the positive atom with uh, equalities given by the facet defining inequalities of the type cone. Okay, so now uh, let me go to cluster algebras. Uh, so I will be a bit quick here. I start with a finite type exchange matrix B naught, acyclic or not, simply S or not. It's completely relevant for this approach. I consider the cluster algebra with principal coefficients and initial exchange matrix B naught. Uh, the exchange relations in this uh, cluster algebra are homogeneous, which uh, enables you to define the g-vectors of the cluster variables. And these g-vectors uh, enable you to define the g-vector fan, which I denote by fb naught of this cluster algebra. So I think if you don't know cluster algebra, even if I spend time explaining these three lines, uh, you will probably not understand in these three remaining minutes. I think it's better that you just look at the pictures so the pictures give you two examples. On the left, uh, you see a type A3 cyclic uh, G vector fan, and on the right, you type, see a type C3 cyclic G vector fan. So initial exchange matrices are here, and these are just the stereographic projections of these fans. So now uh, I need to tell you what are the uh, facets of the type code, and uh, these are given by certain mutations in the cluster algebra. Uh, so if you know the Hosland right and quivers, then you will understand this picture. If not, it's not really important. Let me define a mesh mutation. A mesh mutation is a mutation from a seed Bx to a seed B prime X prime, where little x is replaced by little x prime. So the cluster variable x is replaced by the cluster variable x prime. And uh, this mutation is a mesh mutation if the row of the B matrix corresponding to the exchange is non-negative. And I will call such a mesh mutation initial if it ends at an initial cluster variable. So if X prime is, a cluster, is an initial cluster variable. And we proved that the uh, facets of the type cone of the G vector fan are precisely the G vector dependencies of uh, corresponding to the non-initial mesh mutations. And this immediately proves that the, the type cone is simplicial you see this, <coughs> you see it on the picture. <coughs> the reason is that, uh, well, you see on the picture is that you have one mesh mutation corresponding to each uh, cluster variable. So the mesh mutation which finishes at this cluster variable. And of course, uh, the initial cluster variables correspond to initial mesh mutations. So the number of non-initial mesh mutations correspond, is given by the number of cluster variables minus the number of initial cluster variables. So this shows the following results. Uh, just applying the observations that we had on, on uh, simplicial type cones. If you denote by V of B naught the set of cluster variables, by N of B naught the set of pairs of cluster variables XX prime exchangeable by a non-initial mesh mutation. Uh, and if you pick a positive vector indexed by these uh, non-initial mesh mutations, and consider the polytope defined in the space uh, indexed by all cluster variables and obtained as the intersection of the positive atom with the 
uh, equalities given by these non-initial mesh mutations. These are just the coefficients uh, in the linear dependencies of the G vectors given by these non-initial mesh mutations. Then what you obtain is a generalized SSA hidden. So this recovers a result of Bazimat, Duville, Moussavan, Thomas, and Nildirim uh, for acyclic seeds, but in this approach, you don't need a cyclic or acyclic. This is not important. Okay, so let me finish with this slide, which is a summary of what I did. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, it's really weird, but if you assume that your type cone is simplicial, then you have a very simple uh, description of all polytopal realizations of, of your fan. And there are three fundamental examples in which uh, the type cone is simplicial. On the left, you see the Sylvester fans, which recovers the result of Arkani, Ahmed, Bey, He, and Yan. In the middle, you see the finite type G vector fans with respect to any seed acyclic or not. And this recovers this result by uh, Bazimat, Duville, Musavan, Thomas, and Ildirim. And the last one, which I didn't speak about, uh, is a set of finite Johnson fans for uh, Greek and, and two acyclic quivers. And this gives uh, new realizations of polytopes that we obtained with Yan Palu and Pierre Gieva, Flamengo before. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the wonderful talk, Vincent. And um, people are commenting in the chat, chat about what nice uh, pictures you had all throughout. Thank you. So if you unshare your screen for a second, then yes. in lieu of clapping, everybody can put I their... I don't know how to do that. Oh, oh I can do yeah, that for you. Just, no, that's, that's good. I think I did it. No? Okay. So now if everybody shows your hand clapping or put an emoji there, <laughs> this that's is great. great. Or feel free to put something in the chat as well. So let me hand it back to Alejandro Morales, who will host the question time. There are definitely a couple of questions that have popped up in the chat that are worth um, repeating, even though some of your co-authors already answered partially. Thank you very much, Sarah, and, and thanks, Vanessa, for the wonderful talk. So there's some questions. So the, the first question in the chat was from Dari Fjernberg, who asked, uh, what if you remove the a less than B condition in the definition of the kinematic as a hedron because it reminded him of some rank conditions of matrix Schubert varieties. Uh, what if I remove, sorry, the A less than B? Oh, I see, in the, in the XN. Uh, maybe I should just re reshare my screen, it would be easier. Uh, yes, that's a slide versus, versus the definition of the kinematic space. Uh, yes. So this, this X, in, in this definition, you mean? X or Y, uh, I think X blocks X and Y, but yeah. Uh, yeah, here. Yes. So, uh, so, I, I, so yes, I don't know what happens if I do that. Uh, so here it's just my way to say that the space is labeled by the internal diagonals of the polygon. Mm -hmm. um, as you see, it's easier here to uh, label them by all diagonals and, and force some diagonals to be zero, so one which has on the, on the boundary. Uh, but I haven't thought about your, your, your question. Uh, but, but I understand this, it's uh, related to this uh, kinematic space. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually it might, be, it might become a lot simpler, that thing. It might be just yeah, a, hyper, a hypercube or something. Sorry, maybe that's not very interesting. I, I don't know, I haven't thought about that. I have to look at it. Thank you, Dari, thank you. So, uh, and the next question uh, was from Federico Ardila and was answered, was, there were some comments on the chat uh, from co -authors. So, when is the type cone of a polytope simplicial? Uh, are there nice general conditions? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so, at the moment, uh, the ones we know are all coming from, they are always coming from uh, combinatorics and actually from things which are close to plus algebras. Um, so, so we saw the Sylvester fan, uh, we, we saw the G-vector fans of, uh, of finite type plus algebras. Uh, you saw on the right of my screen at the end, uh, this, uh, I'm trying to go back there, this um, finite jointed fans of, for brick and two acyclic quivers. So this is, a, again, a generalization of the acetahedron coming from the presentation theory. It turns out here that not all fans coming from, from this, uh, from the, the gentle fans, not all gentle fans are, are, have this property. Only this, apparently only this brick and two acyclic uh, quiver condition gives you this, uh, this uh, simplicial um, type cone. Uh, there are other families that we are studying at the moment. Uh, so one is uh, in the set of parametries, parametry fans, if you know parametries, uh, we know that uh, the only ones which, are, which have a simplicial type cone 
are uh, the ones which are in between the cube and the associahedron. If you go higher than the associahedron, then you lose this property. And another family that you will be interested in, uh, Federico, is a, a set of uh, graph associahedra, and in this set you have only the associahedra. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vincent. And the last uh, question before we move on is: uh, Are there any from Francois Bergeron? Are there any analogous constructions associated to the M Tamari lat uh, and there and also rectangular generalizations? Uh, the, I don't know. The good person to ask this question is uh, probably Anna Quadron, which is uh, in both uh, the M Tamari business and the type code business. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Vincent. And so let's thank uh, you very much. Give another round. Uh, another uh, reaction applause. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you.